Hello, so far we have only looked at uh, linear algebra and calculus using SciPy and uh, now we're coming to more signal processing and actually working with data um, and exploring tools that SciPy offers um, yeah, to do these kinds of things. First of all, I would start with the signal and the ND image submodules um, and they both contain functions for working with yeah, certain kinds of signals. Uh, the signal submodule mainly focuses on one-dimensional signals, so vectors, time series, for example, um, whereas ND image um, yeah, looks at one-dimensional signals and also multi-dimensional uh, signals. And as the name already suggests, um, yeah, it, it has a lot of functions for images and especially n-dimensional images. So yeah, you can see a grays uh, you can um, see a grayscale image basically as a two-dimensional image. Um, as soon as it gets color values, it's three-dimensional. You could even take it to four dimensions to have uh, to have a video. And um, yeah, these functions are uh, able to work with these multi-dimensional images. Um, yeah. All right. So let's start. Um, with the basic one-dimensional signal here and I um, prepared an example here where we just have um, some pretty arbitrary function I designed here um, as some kind of a polynomial um, divided by the uh, by e to the power of x um, in this certain range and then unfortunately we got lots of noise which somehow got into this signal and it's now very difficult to um, yeah, do processing with it, analyze it um, because there's just a lot of noise and we can't really see what the signal is anymore and I can also show you how the signal looks so this is our noisy signal um, and as you can see yeah, there's really a lot of noise, you can't really see the structure of the signal anymore but now um, I will show you two very simple methods of um, trying to reconstruct the original signal from that and um, yeah, getting rid of some of that noise. Um, okay, so yeah, the two functions I want to show you are the Gaussian filter 1D and uh, the Butterworth filter. First, the Gaussian filter 1D. This comes from the ND image submodule and um, what it can do is um, basically blur your data and a Gaussian filter um, is often used for images to blur them but it uh, can of course also be used to um, basically blur one-dimensional signals and what this blurring means is just taking a weighted average of a local yeah, of the surrounding of a certain data point and um, by averaging um, basically the neighborhood of every point um, yeah, we cancel out the noise because we have noise in both directions positive and negative um, they will cancel each other out and uh, yeah we can set the value of how large this neighborhood should be and um, how strong the fall off of this weighting should be by using the sigma parameter and I set sigma to 1000 and um, yeah this would probably actually be very good because I already know that the noise that was added to the signal has a sigma value of 1000 so I hear, um, here I just add um, random normal values to the signal and um, yeah the scale of them is the strength value and I set this to 1000 so if I afterwards filter this with another uh, Gaussian filter with a sigma of 1000 then this should get rid of pretty much all of the noise but of course since this is random noise um, we don't get back the exact signal so there's still some uh, differences from yeah the original signal but this Gaussian filter um, is basically uh, a Gaussian curve like this uh, normal distribution um, which is then the weighting <coughs> for the averaging uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, that's how you can 
um, thing of it. Um, yeah, and if we have a look at the uh, left plot here, we can see our original signal in blue, um, this line here, and then the orange line is the Gaussian filtered noisy signal. So the um, Gaussian filter applied to the noisy signal. Uh, as you can see, this is quite, yeah, I think it fit the original signal quite well. And we don't see any of the strong uh, fluctuations from the noise anymore. So, um, yeah, that's really nice. We were able to get rid of that. And the, uh, the orange line does not deviate too much from our uh, blue line. Okay, then the uh, second function I wanted to show you is this Butterworth filter. And um, this is contained in the signal submodule. And what a Butterworth uh, filter is, is basically um, looking at the frequencies of the, the original signal, or in this case, the signal of the, yeah, the noisy signal. It uh, takes a look at the different frequencies which comprise the signal and then um, just removes those frequencies over a certain, uh, over a certain threshold. And um, since our noise here has a very high frequency, there are lots of um, oscillations uh, of our data. We're able to um, basically remove the noise by removing very high frequencies. And um, our original signal doesn't have too high frequencies, as you can see in the blue line here. Um, these are not too yeah, fast oscillations. It's very gradual, uh, whereas the noise is yeah, strongly oscillating. So um, this is what we can um, use to get rid of the noise. So we just say that um, we remove the, um, the frequencies which are over a certain um, threshold. All right, but now what do these parameters here mean? Um, first of all, for this butter function, which implements the Butterworth filter. Um, so this actually only creates the filter and not applies it to our array. Um, but of course, we need to have a filter first to apply it to the array. And uh, yeah, the first parameter here um, is the order of our filter. And the order basically says how fast um, or how strong the frequencies above the threshold should be suppressed. And uh, yeah, it's not um, actually cutting the frequencies above the threshold away completely, but it's just suppressing them. And the order, um, yeah, distinguishes how strongly um, the, the, the higher frequencies are suppressed. And um, yeah, order of two um, basically is just a value in this formula for this filter and higher values would suppress the noise stronger uh, or the high frequencies stronger and a lower value, um, yeah, less strong. And the second value here is the um, cutoff frequency, um, which is the threshold I mentioned uh, where the, uh, like the fall off starts. So where the filter begins to uh, remove parts of the higher frequencies. And here I just set this uh, 2.3. And um, yeah, this has to do with the sampling rate, which is the third parameter here. Um, FS, uh, I set this to the sample rate, uh, which I just set to 1024 at the top here. Um, and this is pretty arbitrary. Usually you know your sampling rate when you have a signal and the sampling rate is um, the rate at which samples were recorded for your signal. So um, like a sampling rate of 1024 would mean that um, for each second of your signal 1024 values were recorded. This is just what the sample rate means and um, yeah the sample rate of course influences the um, frequency of your signal. Okay, then the last parameter here is uh, output, and output just determines in what format the filter is returned. And for our case here, we need these uh, this SOS format. SOS stands for second order, um, second order sections, 
and um, yeah, this is just one format to yeah, save this filter. Um, and then we can pass this SOS filter to this SOS filled function from the signal submodule. And this will then actually apply this filter to our data. And as you can see, we're also passing this N variable here, which is just our noisy signal. Um, so yeah, this SOS filled takes a filter description in this SOS format and a signal that should be filtered with this um, yeah with this filter and as you can see in this plot um, the Butterworth filter um, performed quite well as well um, but I would say personally that the Gaussian filter was a bit better for this case but um, yeah we might be able to achieve better results when playing around with the parameters for our Butterworth filter um, and in different cases for different signals um, it of course makes sense to try out different filters and uh, to see which one works best and um, yeah it's it always depends on the type of noise and the type of signal um, yeah which filter is appropriate but these were just two I wanted to show you Okay, um, now uh, going away from these arbitrary signals and coming to more uh, sensible signals, uh, namely audio signals. Cypy also has some functions to uh, analyze audio data. And um, yeah, it doesn't include too much for audio data, but it has a couple of um, yeah, basic functions for loading uh, wave files and uh, writing wave files for example um, and doing some basic spectral analysis um, of your audio data and for that first of all we import this uh, web file uh, submodule from scipy.io and scipy.io is already a submodule um, but this web file is another submodule in this io submodule and um, yeah we import this so we can uh, read this audio file um, which is in the lectures repository and uh, yeah we can use this web file dot read function and just specify the path and this will return us the sampling rate of this audio file and the actual audio data as a one-dimensional array and then what i just did here is convert this um, data which uh, is saved as 16-bit um, integers into floats and I scaled this to the range uh, from 0 to 1 just that we can work with this a little better and then um, yeah I just plot this signal using a normal um, matplotlib plot so this is how the signal looks and uh, this is just a recording of me saying 1, 2, 3 and um, yeah, you can already see from this plot that we can distinguish the different words. So here we have the one, then we have the two, and then we have the three. And um, yeah, now we would like to see um, how the frequency distribution is for each of these um, time steps. Okay, so how do we do that? We can use a spectrogram for that. And a spectrogram is um, yeah, a method of capturing the frequencies and the change in frequencies over a certain signal, uh, over the range of a signal. And it is often used for audio data to um, yeah, capture the frequencies which are present at certain moments in time. And I can just show you this. And this is how it looks. On the x-axis we again have the time and on the y-axis we now have frequencies. So as uh, here before in this plot we had time on the x-axis and then the amplitude of this actual wave, the sound wave, um, on the y-axis. And now we have um, yeah, time again on the x-axis but frequencies on the y-axis. And you can still um, clearly make out the three words here. And um, yeah, you can even see in this frequency distribution that there are some overtones here and I don't know much about music theory but uh, yeah overtones are basically these uh, frequencies 
which are present when you have some other frequency. I really don't know much about music, but um, yeah, this is visible in the spectrogram and uh, you could do some more analysis and um, figure out at what um, frequency my voice um, was when I, uh, when I recorded this. And um, yeah, you can analyze the frequencies which were present and uh, you can even see maybe some background noise um, which might show up somewhere in this spectrogram plot. Okay, um, now coming from uh, one-dimensional signals to multi-dimensional signals um, or basically images, I will now show you um, two filters for uh, images and these come from the ND image submodule and these filters are the Gaussian filter and the Previt filter and you've seen the Gaussian filter in the one-dimensional case before so this is just basically blurring um, like this local averaging of a neighborhood and um, the Previt filter is an approximation of the first derivative of the image function and uh, what this means is it will detect where there's a strong change in color or in brightness. So whenever you have a strong change from one pixel to the next, this function uh, will detect this and then map a high value to that. Whereas if you have um, basically uh, just an image of one color, um, this will not detect any changes and therefore the uh, values will just be pretty low altogether. Okay, so let me just execute this. I'm using the uh, raccoon image from SciPy again, and this is the original image in grayscale. Then you can see on the blurred version here, it's blurred using a, a Gaussian filter, and I set the sigma value here to eight. The sigma again um, yeah, determines how large and uh, how strong the fall off of this weighting is when um, averaging this neighborhood. And in this case, a neighborhood is basically a two-dimensional patch um, around each of these pixels. And yeah, um, it basically multiplies this um, neighborhood with this two-dimensional Gaussian function, uh, which has a sigma of eight. This is what this means. And if I set this lower, for example, to one, then you can see this is less blurred now, but if I set this really high, you know, like 50, then it's very strongly blurred, blurred and um, yeah, we can't really make out anything anymore. So uh, yeah, the sigma determines how large this neighborhood be, should be um, and how many values should be included for blurring one pixel value. Okay. And now the private function, um, as I said before, this will detect changes in brightness um, and therefore it pretty much highlights edges in images. And I guess this image is not the perfect example for that because we have lots of tiny edges, especially in the fur of the raccoon here, um, where the function yeah, found lots of changes in color or in brightness, but it's not really easy to make out now um, where exactly these edges are in the image. Um, yeah, and um, what you can see, for example, is just at this, um, at the edges of the leaves here, you can see that um, there are stronger edges visible and there it's probably a, lit a little bit easier to make out where the actual edges are. And um, I just had an idea that it would probably be nice um, to also show how we could detect edges in um, a blurred image. So this might make a little more sense. So let me just quickly do this. If we blur the image first, this was the wrong way around, of course. Um, yeah, blur the image first and after that apply the private filter and this should allow us to um, have like more of an edge detection here so here you can see 
that uh, we first blurred the image with the Sigma 5 and then we, run, uh, we ran this Previt edge detection and now we have like more clearly visible edges since if we blur this first we can also show how the blurred image looks so this is blurred with the Sigma 5 just as for the Previt image um, now it detects um, the changes in color but there aren't as many strong changes in color because we blurred out these yeah this fur for example where there are lots of small changes and if we reduce this uh, we can see that we now have more edges again so if we do less blurring first uh, before the private filter we now get yeah, more details again we can see more edges in the image okay